this is Michael from Expanse VR and in this how-to video we're going to look at object pulling. Object pulling offers a significant performance boost as well as helping to better organize our project and is most effective when the number of instantiating is high but the actual number of instantiated objects is low. In other words, when we just have a few different objects that we need to instantiate, but we're repeatedly doing so. A good example is bullets or enemies, where we only have a couple of prefabs that we use, but they get instantiated over and over again. And how it works is that it actually caches the objects for us to use at a later time. And if you're new to the channel, don't forget to like this video subscribe to the channel and of course click that notification button down below to make sure you are notified whenever I post a new tutorial for you. So let's have a look at an example of where object pulling in this scene can help us out. So if we look at our scripts and go into our managers, you can see that we have a spawn manager script, which is currently attached to this spawn manager object. And simply put, it has a spawn point for us, the enemy it wishes to spawn, how many seconds in between each spawn, and finally, how many of the enemies we want to spawn. So a very simple spawn manager at the moment. And if we quickly run the scene, you can see that our enemies are spawning. And over on the left here in the hierarchy, you can see that each one is coming up in the scene. And if we start killing the enemies, you can still see that the enemies are constantly piling up here in our hierarchy, regardless of whether they're alive or whether we have killed them. And at the moment, it's not too bad with only 10 enemies. But at the moment, you can see also that we've only got a couple of live ones on screen. And if we're in the spawn manager here and we change this say to a hundred, all of a sudden in our hierarchy, we've got the potential to have a hundred enemies sitting in here. And if we jump into the spawn manager script and have a quick look at it, as you can see, it's a very simple one. All we're doing is at the start, starting a code routine called spawn enemy and the spawn enemy, we just loop through until we get to the number of enemies that we set in the inspector. The issue that we have is that each time we spawn a new enemy, we are instantiating it. The problem with instantiation is that every time that you do it, you're creating garbage for the memory heap. And that's something that we want to avoid. I'm not going to go into details about exactly what that is in this episode. Just know that you want to avoid it because it can slow down your... Now, if we jump into the enemy script and we come down to the bottom, I've created a function called cleanup. And at the moment it's not doing anything, which is why you saw in the game that when they died, they just simply wilted down and sat there. But ideally we want to get them off the screen. And also we want to make sure that the hierarchy isn't uh, cluttered with a whole bunch of objects that are not being used. Now, quite often I see in other tutorials and what some new uh, users might think to do is just simply destroy the object. And of course we don't want to do that straight away because we want the little guy to sit there for a little bit. So what we can do is you return, say give it three seconds and then we will clean it up. And if we jump quickly into the game, so as you can see, they die, they disappear and our hierarchy is being cleaned up. And while this is solving our issue of our hierarchy being cluttered and it getting rid of the enemy off the screen for us, it is causing another issue. And in a small game where you've only got a couple of items being instantiated, maybe it's not gonna be such a big issue for you. But if you're trying to optimize for mobile or you've got a lot of objects being instantiated, this is gonna cause a problem for you. Okay, so let's have a think about what we need to do. The very first thing we need to do is to check the pool to see 
if there are any inactive enemies. If there is, activate it and place in spawn point. If not, instantiate a new enemy, add to the pool and place in spawn point, which actually happens as we instantiate it. So the first thing we need to do is create our pool. And this is gonna be a list. You can do that with a dictionary as well, um, if you want something a little bit more advanced. But for what we're gonna be doing today to show you a simple pooling system, we're just gonna stick with a list. And this is gonna be a list of game objects. And we're gonna call this enemy pool. So there we go, we've got our new list. So now I'm going to create a function and I think with this one we do need to return something. It's going to be called check enemy pool. So we're going to use a while loop for this. And what do we need to do? Well, obviously we need to iterate through. And what are we checking? We're checking to see if the enable, if it is true, we return that particular object. And if it's not, we return null. So what we want to do first is check enemy pool. And we're actually going to move this. We then need to check to see if new enemy is null. In which case we don't need to create one. It's just going to be that. And here we will add to the pool. So how do we add it to our pool? Very simple, enemy pool dot add new enemy. So that handles that part. So if there isn't one in the pool, it's gonna add it to it there. And the last thing that we need to do, actually, no, we'll do this up here where it makes more sense. else new enemy dot so we need to set it active and before that new enemy we need to actually set its position Okay, and it's pretty much just as simple as that. So let's give this a test and see if I've missed anything. Okay, first one is instantiated fine. And no more, ah, uh, what's going on? We have a slight logic error here where this should actually be false. We're actually looking for one that is inactive, not active. So let's try that again. Cool. Ah, oh, actually, and the other thing I need to do is when they die, the cleanup we need to change. So when we're dying now, we're no longer going to destroy the object. We need to deactivate it. 
All right, try it again. Okay, our enemies are popping up just fine. He's dying just fine. Okay, they're reappearing just fine. What is happening is, is that their state is not the same anymore. So we actually need to change their state back to what it was. So what I mean by that is that we're going to need to reset the values on our animator. And we do that by animator dot yes right default values and this will set our animator back to square one but we then also need to do which he said these two is walking and that should have us back up and running shoot 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 dies and we got one down there is walking has not been triggered. Why has it not been triggered? Ah, okay, so the way it's just, it's just the way that I've set it up. So what we need to do is this, public void. And here, start movement. When we first move, this is just the way I prefer to have things laid out because it makes more sense. Okay, so in this one we need to get component enemy movement. There are better ways of doing this, but this will work for the moment just to show you what we mean. And quickly just giving this a go. We shoot, dies, dies, dies. Seems to be working just right. Oh, except the cloud is not working. Why is that? Uh, let's have a look at the enemy. Ah, the sphere collider switch off. Oh, that's right. We switched off the... Ah, yes, we need to reset. So, yeah, one thing that we have to be aware of when we are using a pooling system is that we have to make sure that we reset everything back to its original state. Oh, and I imagine we also need to reset the health back to its original state as well. So we've already reset the animator back to its default state. So why don't we actually extract this out, make this a little bit easy on us and say reset enemy. So what else did we need to do in here? We needed to, so we had to reset the collider back to being enabled and our health we need to reset back to its starting amount now normally you would have a separate one for your start health etc but for the moment we're just going to set it right back to three and now we should be working fine one, two three dead one two three dead now the next one coming up should be from there dead
Yep, we're working fine now. Perfect. So that's it for this episode. Um, something else that you could be looking into doing, and if you want to give this a try, you could make a pulling system for the bullets themselves. At the moment, I've just got it very simple that they destroy after a certain period of time, but that, again, is not the best way of doing things, especially if we're spraying bullets all over the place and I'm, or if I have a machine gun or something like that. So that's definitely something I would want to put into a pulling system so we could have a bullet uh, pull manager or when we're creating it. The other thing that you would want to look into doing later on, especially if you have multiple pulls for different objects, is actually have a pull manager itself which handles all that um, all the different pulling and you can have uh, different lists of all the different ones. Another way you can optimize what you're doing as well is instead of using a list, you can use a dictionary. Um, that way you can assign some other attributes to it and that can help with things. But again, this is uh, something for another episode. But if you do decide to have a crack at doing a bullet pool system or something else, definitely jump into the Discord channel and show us what you've done or hit me up on Twitter. I'm more than happy to have a look. And if you have any questions below, let me know. And I'll definitely be using this pulling system in some of the other series that I'm doing. For instance, we'll be using this in the first person shooter series. If you haven't checked that out already, have a look above now. We have a link to that. Um, and we will be looking to use that in some of the other future ones. So this is definitely an important subject and I hope that it helps with your future projects. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to like and share to help grow our beautiful Unity community. And don't forget to hit that subscribe and notification button below to make sure you get to see our next video. See you shortly.